Hello, hello. Thank you for coming back in such great numbers. I'm always surprised at the large size of the group for our classes on menopause. If you're just joining us, this channel is known as Menopause University. It's school, and I'm your professor. Here, we address everything that is related to menopause in any way. We are currently in the early phases of a unit on cancer. Cancer in the general, generic sense. We're not yet discussing any particular kind of cancer in any specific part of your body. That will all come later. Right now, I'm just giving you a primer on cancer itself. My book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, has separate chapters on each type of cancer, but it does not have a chapter on cancer in general. So please stay tuned to this video for that. Today we will begin to discuss abnormalities of a cell. This is video number 310. Last week in video number 309, I presented the factors involved in the life of a normal cell. You'll recall this list. Looking at this list of factors for a normal cell, notice that some of the factors refer to either cell size or cell number. Here's the list with those items highlighted in red. These are the two things we'll discuss today, cell size and cell number. Specifically, we'll address an increase in cell size and an increase in cell number. But of course, in medicine, we don't keep things simple by using the terms increase in cell size and increase in cell number. Instead, we give them new names. So let's discuss these one at a time. And you know, there's no better way to get started with, with this than a quiz question, don't you? <laughs> I just love quiz questions. I've always been that weird person who loved exams, and I just don't understand why other people hate them so much. <laughs> well, here goes. Which of the following statements is true regarding an increase in cell size and an increase in cell number? A. An increase in cell size always indicates cancer, whereas an increase in cell number does not. B. An increase in cell number always indicates cancer, whereas an increase in cell size does not. C. Neither an increase in cell size nor an increase in cell number always indicates cancer. D. Both an increase in cell size and and an increase in cell number always indicates cancer. E. Neither an increase in cell size nor an increase in cell number ever indicate cancer. F. An increase in cell size always indicates cancer, whereas an increase in cell number never indicates cancer. G. An increase in cell number always indicates cancer, whereas an increase in cell size never indicates cancer. See why I like quiz questions? They make you grapple with the details so that you really have to think critically. It is never my intention to torture you, and you don't get a grade. Besides, you're the only person who knows whether or not you answered the question correctly. So here's the correct answer in bold. Okay, now let's find out what you need to know in order to answer the question correctly. We'll start with cell size. All cells have a specific size that is normal for that kind of cell. And no matter how many cells there are in total, each individual cell is the same size as all the other cells under normal circumstances. Last week we talked about a cell's identity as being similar to the last name of people belonging to the same family. But in a family of people, the individuals are of all different sizes. You have large adults and small children. 
You have fat family members and thin family members. Yet, they all belong to the same family. Cells are not like that. All the cells in a family of cells are the very same size. And this makes sense because, as I taught you last week, cell reproduction produces identical clones of the mother cell. And while cells have a cell cycle, the cell cycle does not involve growth in the same sense of growth in humans. Instead, when a cell reproduces, it produces two cells of its own size. So normal cells are all identical. Here I have a card with cells of normal size. They're really pearls, but they function as a good representation of cells. And I'm going to put these on a board just so that we have this for reference, okay? So when cell that increases in size is not normal, and we have names for all things that are abnormal, usually the medical names are a combination of words from Greek or Latin roots, and they typically combine various words to create the overall meaning. This is the case for the word that designates an increased size of a cell. The word is hypertrophy. Hypertrophy refers, refers to an increase in the size of a cell. The prefix hyper means too much, and the root word troph means to feed. The implication is that feeding too much makes you bigger than normal. So just as you increase in size, if you eat too much, so does a cell. So here's a card with cells that are hypertrophied. Notice how big these are. Now, a cell usually increases in size as a result of a particular stimulus. And the hypertrophy may or may not be a problematic thing. When a bodybuilder works out to make his muscles huge, those muscle cells are hypertrophied. Each muscle cell is larger than normal. But hypertrophy doesn't mean cancer. A hypertrophied cell can revert to its original size when the stimulus that caused it to grow is removed. A bodybuilder who stops working out does not maintain his huge muscles. So, hypertrophy simply means an increase in the size of cells with no indication as to whether or not it has anything at all to do with cancer. Notice that the only difference between hypertrophy and normal cells, notice that the only difference between this card and this card is that the hypertrophy cells are larger. Everything else is the same. They are both very orderly, and they're both very predictable in their form. Now, here's where we move on to our next term. This time, we're considering an increase not in size, but in number. The word for that is hyperplasia. Hyperplasia means an increase in cell number. Now, the root words for hyperplasia aren't as logical as those for hypertrophy. Hyper means too much again, obviously. But plasia is an odd duck. I like to think of plasia as being very plastic. And that's because its meaning is quite variable. Plasia actually means formation or development. So the literal meaning of hyperplasia is too much formation or too much development. But somehow we use it to mean too many. With hyperplasia, the cells are normal in size, but there are just too many of them. So here's our normal card of cells. 
bearing normal cells of normal size. And with hyperplasia, there are too many cells. So the normal cells form this. There are just too many of them. In general, you see that there are too many layers of cells here. They're still normal in appearance and in size. They're just, and they're still very orderly and predictable. There's just too many of them. So like hypertrophy, an increase in the number of cells is also usually due to a particular stimulus. And it may or may not be a problematic thing. And like hypertrophy, hyperplasia does not mean cancer. Hyperplasia can revert to its original number of cells when the stimulus that caused them to multiply is removed. Here's an example. If you walk around barefoot a lot, the soles of your feet become very thick and rough. And that's because the trauma of walking barefoot causes the skin on the soles of your feet to thicken. In other words, you form more layers of skin. More layers of skin cells mean that you have more skin cells. That's hyperplasia. But if you stop walking around barefoot and you start getting pedicures and you start wearing nice cushioned shoes, your soles will get thinner and softer. Many times, Hyperplasia is a structural change that serves a purpose. Your breasts undergo hyperplasia when you get pregnant. This is entirely normal and it results in your ability to breastfeed your baby. Other times, hyperplasia can be due to a loss of the regulatory re mechanisms that control the normal number of cells. I referred to this as traffic lights in the last tutorial. If the traffic lights malfunction, you can give too many cells the signal to reproduce, and that results in hyperplasia. So what you've learned today is that there are two kinds of changes that constitute too much for cells. Hypertrophy is an increase in cell size, and hyperplasia is an increase in cell number. Both are due to stimuli that cause the increase. Both are reversible, and neither means cancer. But these are two changes in cells that you will encounter in future videos and in the context of various cancers. So this is why I discuss them today. But this is where I'll stop. That's what these traffic lights are telling me to do now. <laughs> Next week, we'll take a look at this a bit further and discuss some other terms that are pertinent to cancer. You know that you can schedule a consultation with me at menopausetaylor.me at any time. I will help you understand anything you need to know, present all of your options, tell you the pros and cons of each, and school you in how to get what you want. You can also stalk me <laughs> on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at any time, and you can subscribe to this channel at any time. Stay well, and I will see you next week. <laughs> Bye!